All right then. Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Spateri and I'm a senior global technologist in the product strategy team at Veeam and glad to be once again here at Cloud Field Day number 10. The first thing that I'm going to you know, go through, and there's been a bit of question around this, is you know, awareness and control and opportunity for our cloud and service providers. And it's going to tie in quite well into what you saw um, AZ demo. Okay, now, how do you get awareness and control for service providers to turn in to some sort of managed service offering? And just to go through this, we're just going to take a quick look at some service provider innovation history. I'm going to take you guys through another little bit of a look through the service provider console, what's new in the latest release that we did, and also a very, very quick demo um, just to kind of tie up what you've seen in the previous session. So just to start with, um, you know, like you guys have heard me talk about before, being service provider focused, Veeam has had a proud history. In fact, last year we celebrated 10 years of our Veeam cloud and service provider program, which is a specific program for our cloud and service providers. But if we look at it, we've really been strong with our providers since probably about version three or four. Certainly when I first started playing with Veeam, uh, when I was working for a service provider, we needed a product that was gonna do the job of backing up virtualization. And that was around the time of Veeam version four. Okay, and it's been basically, you know, since then, it's been all into my life being with Veeam. Um, however, I think the point to raise is that even before we had this concept of the VCSP, our providers were actually looking to us and leveraging our features and functionalities for their backup as a service offerings, for their infrastructure offerings, right? So that basically tied us very, very closely to the VMware cloud providers. And if you have a look and see the amount of VMware cloud providers that are out there versus the amount of Veeam service providers that are out there, it's a very close ratio. Okay, and as you look through the last 10 years specifically, we've really accelerated the growth and the focus of our service provider products. So Veeam Cloud Connect Backup, Cloud Connect Replication, which is the replication and DR piece, all enabling our service providers to offer services based on Veeam technology. And we've really hit our strides with one particular product, which I'm going to talk about in this particular section. In 2016, when we released the Managed Backup Portal, now this uh, product has gone through two name iterations. We love changing names at Veeam. It's one of our, it's one of our hobbies. Um, so the Veeam Service Provider Console, as it is today, was called the Availability Console two years ago, and it started life as the Managed Backup Portal. Um, but what it effectively allows our providers to do is to power anything as a service. Okay, this is a bit of a fancy slide, right? But I think the point of it is, is that no matter where your data lives, no matter where it's living, no matter the workload, no matter if it's like living on a VMware-based cloud, if it's living in a physical server, if it's in a SaaS-based server, now as AZ has showed you, if the workloads are living within AWS, Azure or Google, now it's possible for our providers to offer this as a service, okay? So we needed a tool to be able to facilitate this and make it easier for our providers to basically do this. Um, but if you look at where we sit across the board, we obviously have a fair few cloud offerings today and it's been shown in the last couple of cloud field days, right? Um, the more public clouds as we like to call them. So what we've just seen, we can extend to the cloud by leveraging technology such as object storage. And we do a lot around immutability and around ransomware with that. And I'll touch on that a little bit later on. But then that last point there, the powered by the VCSP partners, we have a lot of VCSP partners in play, 10,000 plus actually. Um, not all of them are sort of what you would call transacting, but again, number is more around the six to 7,000 mark, but they can all offer services, backup as a service, DR as a service, managed serviceability based on our products. So what I'm going to quickly show you guys is a service provider console, a quick refresher, quickly look at the public cloud management and some other highlight features of version five, which just came out less than a month ago, and then do a very quick demo as well. Just to kind of recap what the main capabilities of the service provider console are. So at its core, it's basically remote management, customer onboarding, license management, and then you know also agent management as well. So from a management perspective, what we're allowing our, our providers to do is to be able to deploy, manage, and then report on aspects of a V managed service for backup. So if there's an on-premises service, if there's something running in their cloud, they can basically do a lot of the remote monitoring and management that was a little bit tough before. And this product does it all for them. 
It's very API centric and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. And it obviously offers a self-service portal as well. So self-service capabilities, not only for the actual Veeam cloud service provider um, workers themselves, if they've got an IT help desk, whatever it might be looking after the fleet of customers, but also from a reseller perspective and also from a customer perspective. So there's three levels of multi-tenancy that are built into this product itself. Now, what we typically do with the product is we lockstep it with our Veeam backup and replication product itself. So the Veeam service provider console sits on top of features and functionalities that are introduced with the main platform, right? So Veeam backup and replication. So this year, um, last month, 24th of February, we released both products together in the one go. Now, the really cool thing about the service provider console is that it's free. Okay. So... This is the big thing about this, and this is where I think it has a really unique place in the vendor land in terms of other products and other competitors that don't really have something like this in terms of this management portal built specifically for our cloud providers to drive service revenue. The fact that it's free obviously makes it, you know, a no brainer for our providers to install. From an overall high level perspective, I won't say 30,000 foot view because we're all missing flying at the moment. So let's, uh, let's just say from a high level, uh, the way that it works, it's all based on the premise of our Cloud Connect technology. So the Cloud Connect technology that was released as of Veeam 8 uh, or version 8, which is basically the technology that allows connectivity between both sites. We tunnel connections through a cloud gateway, and then we have the Veeam backup replication server talk to that cloud gateway, create the tunnel. Now that allows us to talk between the sites. Now that not only allows us to push backups between the sites, but it also allows us to do management, but it also allows to push things to the tenancies as well. And I'll show you an example of that in a demo very quickly. But suffice to say, once you'd have this all connected up and once uh, a tenant or a customer connects from their Veeam backup replication to a service provider console, they've have, they have the ability to basically manage everything at their end and have it managed. In terms of service provider console version five, the top features that we're gonna look at um, in, in, in a bit more detail probably are the last three there, but we've obviously expanded, um, you know, the ability to, to do more consumption. We've expanded license supportability. We've done more all around the APIs, but I'm gonna spend time talking about the cloud native workloads that we're, that we're backing up through the Veeam agents. Um, and then obviously talk a little bit about the security enhancements as well. Firstly, just to quickly go over the Veeam agents. So the Veeam agents are one of the core features and functionality of this actual product itself, right? So we can actually deploy, manage, and then report on. So this going back to that awareness and control of the agent for Windows, the agent for Linux, and the new agent for Mac. Okay, so those three agents that we have in play, the Mac agent was re released as part of our V11. It's a really exciting one for us. But the ability for this particular product to deploy, go into a remote site, get a look at what machines are living on the remote site, and then be able to remotely push an agent, deploy it, and then manage it via some policy can be all done via this particular product itself. Now, we've expanded the supportability of that in this to basically mean that you, if you want to control and manage your Veeam agents from the console wholeheartedly, you can do that. But what we found as well is that some customers, especially if they were existing companies on, companies on premises, they were maybe deploying agents to physical workstations or cloud workstations, wherever it might be, because agents can be physical, they can be virtual, they can be in the cloud, it doesn't really matter. But if you were doing that through Veeam backup replication, you now have the ability to basically have awareness and control of that through the service provider console. The RESTful API, um, I would say that we are now API centric um, with this particular release. We've battle tested this and we've certainly got some battle scars from the first couple of versions of this. We're up to version 3.1 of the API. Um, and this is a very strong API. In fact, the API itself here um, has more features and functionalities than what the UI has. Um, so that's interesting in itself, right? So you can see the direction that we're going in with this particular uh, product, because we understand that a lot of our providers, like Ned touched on earlier, you want to consume and basically, you know, do things in a more infrastructure as code way. You want to do stuff with more automation, more orchestration, and certainly um, service providers usually lead the way with that in terms of them being able to consume products through APIs. So we've been very pertinent and very particular in making sure that the APIs are strong for this release. Um, 
To tie the demo up though, that we saw in the previous uh, section, I'm gonna literally just talk about the fact that we can actually manage and monitor and have awareness of control of Veeam Backup for AWS and Veeam Backup for Azure through the console, leveraging what we call the plugin or the platform integration services that are in Veeam Backup replication. I'm gonna basically go and go straight into the demo. Now I'm on the service provider console. Now this is obviously a web-based um, login that I can go into and what I'm doing, I'm logging in as the top line VCSP. So as a top line VCSP, I have access to see all of my tenancies, all of my resellers. And I get a really interesting view to start with. And I touched on this a little bit in the last cloud field day. So I'm not gonna go over it in any significant detail. Um, but basically what I can do here is I can actually go in and see in terms of my monthly revenue. Cause remember, this is a tool that can be used for revenue as well. You can, you know, bill it with this actual product itself, or you can get data out via the APIs and send it into other back uh, billing products as well. But effectively what we're doing here is we're seeing how many protected VMs we have, how many cloud backups, all the information that's relevant to us in terms of what's happening for this particular infrastructure. Now, if I can go down here, we've got some filtering that will allow us to go and break it down in to our resellers. Remember I mentioned the fact that we have got these tiering options. So here you can see reseller one, reseller one has ownership of these particular companies here. Reseller two has ownership of these particular companies here. But what I can do here is click in and actually get a view of what only AZ Carts and Skis has in itself, right? So right now I'm looking at only what's relevant for AZ Carts and Skis. I can see he's doing quite well. AZ, you owe me $27,000 by the way. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, the other thing that we've added just quickly in V5 is some really interesting, um, you know, sort of visual impacts. So here we've, we've got this dashboard where we can come in and, and take a look and see what's happening across our, our tenancies, across our resellers to see what's happening with our jobs. 61% have been green. So think about this from a help desk perspective, um, really functional for that point, point of view. So we're going to come and see what's happening with our jobs, whether there's success, whether there are warnings. Um, in terms of the backup jobs themselves, here is where we come and actually see the computers. Now, these are either managed by console or they're managed by the backup server, like I mentioned before. What's really interesting here, though, is the virtual machines now sharing the virtual infrastructure. So this is typically going to be your VMware virtual machines, but now the public clouds. Okay, so now we can see here, you're actually gonna see a few of the machines that AZ was basically backing up in the previous demo. So now as a provider, I have awareness of control of these particular machines. Now think about this and where it's important. And the point that I wanna sort of make is that as a managed service provider of any side, it could be a cloud provider, could be a small town managed service provider. I might have a customer that has on-premises um, infrastructure running workloads. They might be using Veeam backup and replication to back that up. They might even be sending some to Cloud Connect. They might be using me as an offsite repository. Now, if there's a direction from that company to basically move a workload into Azure or to move it into AWS, now I, as the actual managed service provider, lose some level of visibility on that. And I can't bill for that particular workload anymore. So what's really important in doing this is we're able to tie it all together and actually have the availability to look and see what the customers are doing if they tie their Veeam backup replication, uh, sorry, their Veeam backup for AWS or for Azure into their VBR server. Because now here, I can see that AZ is backing up three instances. I can see that David Hill with his Hill Northern Acorns is backing up machines into Amazon Web Services and Azure itself. So again, something to really point out here for our service providers where they didn't really have a play to generate service revenue based on this, now they do, okay? Um, just quickly here, I wanted to go through and show a little bit about the billing summary. Um, I wanted to go in here and look at some usage reporting and the usage reporting ties into some of the advancements that we've made into, um, I'm just gonna pick this one here. I'll just roll it, load it up. So this is basically an invoice that was generated and this is going to be sent to the customer, but also the information is being picked out by the service provider as well. Now, the cool thing here is that we can set a policy or a plan that bills against them. So we can literally put in something to say that, you know, a managed server or a cloud VM is going to cost them $10 a month. Um, we can see that we've actually got some specific usage reporting and costing against the performance tier. Now, if we had the archive tier or the sober like we, like we have in our existing technology, we would bill specifically against that. But we're getting into some really good costing and some really good breakdowns for your customers or for the amount of service providers to actually bill against 
But remembering as well, this information can be pulled out via the API and manipulated into other billing engines as well. So something that's quite important to point out. The one thing I wanted to show though, um, in terms of the discovery and one of the other features, if I go here, I've got the ability to actually see the backup servers that are under my control. Now I can see that AZ has the backup server that he was just using for his demos. Now, if I wanted to basically go and manipulate this backup server, I've got the ability in version five to actually patch this remotely. Okay, now this is a really cool feature as well in version five where I can go and base and effectively select an executable, which might be a hotfix, it might be an update that we've released, and I can effectively do um, the patch remotely from the VM um, service provider console. It'll upload the file through the Cloud Connect server itself, through Cloud Connect between the Cloud provider to the on-premises VBR, push it out there, execute it slightly, and then basically upload it. So again, think of this from the point of view of, of a managed service provider that has um, a number of different customers managing hundreds of VM backup replication servers. I need to do an update quickly. This has the mechanism to do it. So another useful feature of the VM service provider console. Just in terms of the configuration, if I go into what I wanted to show was the subscription plans here very quickly. And this is where we effectively go and tell it to, to bill. So here we've got the ability to set currency, um, we can set manage backups, this is what I was talking about with regards to the managed services, being able to allocate managed services costs to generate revenue for the managed service providers. Um, if it's a cloud VM, if it's a workstation agent, a server VM, um, we've got the ability to do some free of charge stuff, which was brought into version five as well. So a lot of providers, a lot of managed service providers have the concept of a free tier, or they might be running a certain promotion. This is where it would come into play here. Um, in terms of the cloud backup, if I go here, this is where we're basically telling it to say, okay, for the performance tier and archive tier and capacity tier, let's bill separately for that, which is representative of what, of what you saw in that particular bill. The last thing that I wanted to show you here was actually to log out of here and log in as AZ. So let's go here. So what we're gonna do here, basically before I was logged in, as the top level VCSP. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna log in as the customer, right? So just for a, a second, just imagine that AZ has actually left the company and this site has been handed over to a managed service provider. AZ, I'm gonna need your MFA code because MFA was one of the uh, features that we put into version five. So some good security there. Sure, 873. 873. 803. 803. Beautiful. Let's hope we capture that quickly. There we go. Okay, so now I'm logged in as the customer here, right? So you see a slightly different view, a slightly different look, but from a customer perspective, I can still go in here and have a look and see what my backup jobs are doing in terms of if they're managed by the backup server, the virtual machines that we're backing up, those machines that live in the public cloud. It's a very, very robust and cool way for our providers to offer some self-service capability to, and you know, give the customer visibility to what's happening in their environment. So it's all about that awareness and control.